Hey everybody, it's Lenora from It's a New Dawn. And I am here today with uh, somebody I met through TikTok. Like I said to all of you, TikTok has been my thing. And um, I don't know, I've met some really great people on there and all the podcasts that I've lined up are all from TikTok. But Wave Wild is my first guest today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I do have a podcast named It's a New Dawn for you. I've changed it over to It's a New Dawn, and you can get me on every major platform. So go take a listen. You're my first guest. So Yay! It's really special. So I met Wave on TikTok about um, four months ago, well, the end of March, when the whole COVID thing had started. And um, I had no idea about TikTok and we're not going to be, this is not what the subject is going to be specifically is TikTok, but I have to tell everybody how I met you. Um, I didn't know where to go on the platform. I got on the platform because I was trying to promote my business uh, doing, I'm an RN holistic health coach. Um, I do some personal training and Reiki and yoga and nutritional counseling. So um, I didn't know how to do that. And I was listening to Gary V, uh, Gary Vanacek, and he's an inspirational speaker, a motivational speaker. And every morning when I was running, I'd listen to him and he's like, you gotta get on TikTok, gotta get on TikTok. So you know what, I did it. And I started watching your lives, which I had no idea about. I'm like, oh, what the heck is a live? <laughs> so I go in and I find out like you, you thought my name was Dawn and you're like, Hey Dawn, how are you? And you're like, I practice yoga too. And, um, we, I connected to you. You, you have a lot of people on there. So I don't know if you connected with yeah. me, but I connect, I connected with you. So the subject of my podcast are just people who have overcome adversities in their lives and perhaps not all some of them help others because of those adversities that they've gone through. Um, but I had said something to wave if she would be interested on in being on the podcast and you agree. So I'm going to have you take it away and just tell me a little bit about, you know, your story and what led you to where you are today. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'll just start off by saying a little bit about who I am and what my what I do, just to give a little bit of context. Um, so again, yes, my name is Wave Wild. That's my real name. Um, I'm a personal brand coach, a photographer, and TikTok educator. Uh, so I'm based in Toronto, and I travel. Well, I was traveling before COVID all over the world for photo shoots and then that that completely changed my business which is how I kind of got into TikTok as well um yeah but it all you know started uh I'm like how far do we want to go back um we can start you, a little you, bit you know, we're, talking just about, <laughs> we're talking about adversity so uh you know I'll start yeah basically with my childhood that's where it all goes back to right so growing up I was a huge huge introvert and I really didn't understand what that meant. And unfortunately, there was a lot of drama going on in my family and between my parents. And I was, I guess what you could say, like emotionally neglected. Um, I wasn't, um, and it took me a long time to kind of realize this, but I wasn't nurtured as a child. And so being an introvert, I just felt like there was something wrong with me. You know, I didn't fit in, uh, I didn't feel comfortable and all of that, um, all of that kind of being an outcast and feeling like an outcast had a really huge negative impact on my self-esteem and confidence. And that really lasted like through most of my life. And one way I dealt with it was through photography. Um, you know, I was, I felt safe because I could hide behind the camera. I hated being in front of the camera and my mom was always, you know, like trying to take photos of stuff. Um, so that was just a really safe place for me. And I also spent a lot of time reading National Geographic. And I know it sounds like so cliche, but I loved looking at the pictures and learning about other cultures. And I think that really, really influenced um, my desire for photography and a desire for travel. Uh, so that's a, a little bit about that. And 
uh, as I, you know, grew uh, as a photographer, I then, you know, be it became more of my mission to help empower women on camera. Uh, because I have a whole big long story about how that evolved. Because <laughs> that took a long well, time. Well, I want to hear it. I do. I do. Wanna, <laughs> I feel like I there's, I feel like there's kind of multiple stories within stories. So that's okay. Yeah, um, I can tell you, yeah, the story about how I became more comfortable on camera. Uh, so I would like love said, that because <laughs> I, I feel like it's a parallel thing. I was huge introvert also and I, oh my God, the camera, forget it. Just forget it. So I would love how you empower women to be comfortable on camera. For sure. So yeah, I did. Uh, so I've done photography for many, many years. I started out as a wedding photographer. That was my bread and butter for about uh, about 10 years. Um, I burnt out of that industry and took a step back, went back to school, studied kinesiology, worked in health and fitness, and was teaching yoga. I got really into yoga. That kind of took over my whole life and started teaching yoga. And then I had a lot of yoga teacher friends who were saying they knew about my photography background um, and asking me for photos for their website, for their social media channels, for their workshops that they're hosting. And I learned about brand photography. And then I took a course in personal branding online got really, really into it and really felt like, and did a few of these photo shoots with my friends and really felt like, you know what, this, I think I finally, finally found my purpose with photography. I really love this niche of helping women to grow their business, um, helping to empower them, make them feel comfortable on camera because most of my photography career, especially weddings and brides was was you know dealing with women who don't feel comfortable on camera who always would say you know i'm not photogenic and uh you know i feel awkward mm -hmm. i don't know what to do with my body um so yeah but at I that decided, point how are you feeling how are you feeling about your self-esteem um i mean were you doing it for other people and still feeling small or at that point you, when i first started. Yeah, it was still feeling small. I mean, I had started a journey, you know, through yoga, I really uh, felt like I started to come into my own. I don't know what it is about the yoga mat that kind of humbles you. And it's like the self acceptance just started to come um, and really embrace more of my physical appearance. Those were a lot of my hangups were on my physical appearance, basically around my face. That's, you know, people have, you know, hangups around about different parts of their body. My part has always been my face. And there's another story, a reason why that is, but I don't want to get off on another no, story. No, I and don't get off too much, but I do <laughs> want to hear that too, because I have yeah. that same issue. So I would love yeah. to hear that. So go ahead. I want so, to hear the rest. <laughs> So yeah, so I was like, okay, I'm going to relaunch my business in brand photography, but how can I, you know, have a business and, and tell women and teach women how important it is to show up and be on camera and be the face of your brand if I'm not doing that myself. Mm -hmm. So uh, I went on a trip uh, with my partner. We were, for, it was a, one of his work trips and I tagged along. We were in Savannah, Georgia. And I thought to myself, I started thinking, oh, maybe, you know, I should hire a photographer. I need to have this experience of what it's like to have my own portrait taken. Uh, so I wanted like the full on experience of getting glammed up and, and having this uh, portrait session. And it was not cheap. Uh, so it was, you know, a little bit scary <laughs> to spend that type of very, money. Very, very. And I went and it, oh, it was just an incredible experience. Uh, so, you know, you start off with your hair and makeup, about two, you know, two hours of that. And then um, what, she, what she does, her, what she does is really, really interesting is she has uh, all these dresses that you can choose from like major gowns, beautiful tiaras, everything. And you go out and you get your portrait taken. Now, I just wanted to do some more clothes that were like me. I didn't go glam because I wanted this was for, more for my brand and I was using these photos for my own website and business. So I wanted um, to look a little bit more like me, not, you know, on a, like a pageant queen. Anyways, mm -hmm. we went out and I don't know what happened during this photo shoot. She was very empowering, encouraging. And it was just like this inner model. I did not know existed That's... came out and yes, I've been wow. coaching people on these poses and stuff. And 
Uh, I think it was just feeling like so glam and empowered and beautiful that I just, you know, just started to move and um, had so much fun with it. And that was really empowering for me. And then I got the pictures back and um, just, I felt so beautiful. And of course, showing people oh. and the feedback I got were like, oh my gosh, who are you? Oh. <laughs> um, so, so awesome. That was, a very empowering experience that was like, to me, I was like, you know, that is what I want to do for other women. Um, I'm that... not there yet though. Wait, <laughs> I'm not there. When yeah. you said, when you said, you know, when you pick out all this stuff and it's really, you know, it's really expensive. I don't know. I haven't, I've had somebody who would, would do that for me, but I'm not there yet. Not there yet. So I'm really proud of you. That's, That's okay. Really you know, it takes, you know, little micro movements, baby steps to get there. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And you know what? Being on TikTok is, is huge, right? Because it forces, a lot. To, it forces you to be on camera and on video. So, you know, if you're... I know that, but it's that filter too. Wait, <laughs> it's that filter too. Yeah, so <laughs> it helps, but... It takes, you know what, it takes just a little bit of practice. It's a skill. It can be learned. It's just learning angles in your body. So, you know, every photo shoot, I just, you know, I always say I have this little posing tutorial in my back pocket. I just pull it out, give you a few tips, break it down. Um, it's a lot easier than you think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyways, yes, I had this experience and that really, really boosted my confidence and, uh, really kind of just helped me form my mission of empowering women through brand photography. Now, while that was happening, um, I also had a few other things that happened in my life um, that just kind of like totally did a 180. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that's another story. <laughs> well, go ahead. I'm, I'm just stories. hanging out. Yeah. I'm just hanging out here. I'm having my, my lemon water here. and yeah. Maybe first what I will go back to is um, another reason why I sort of had this low self-esteem. Uh, so I was born with something called congenital muscular torticollis. And in layman's terms, it just means like twisted neck. So I had trauma traveling through the birth canal. And part of this trauma was because my mother was in a car accident and she was hit um, by another car with a, from a drunk driver. He unfortunately died in the accident. Anyways, um, so I had this trauma traveling through the birth canal. So it, it, is, it, it resulted in a twisted neck and some facial deformities. Uh, so when I was a baby, they were able to kind of like mold my face a little bit, um, but mm -hmm. there was not a lot done with, um, it was not diagnosed when I was younger. Usually, uh, when this happens with a baby, it's diagnosed immediately and they're able to fix it. So as I was growing up and became a teenager, this sort of twisting of my head became more and more noticeable. And my mom took me to several different doctors. They weren't sure what was going, what was really going on. Um, it took a few doctors before I got that diagnosis of the torticollis. Anyway, so I had a surgery where they cut my SEM, mm -hmm. sternocleidal mastoid muscle, um, at the yeah. bottom here, there's scars there, and at the top, to lengthen it, to straighten my head out, and then mm -hmm. I wore a neck brace in high school. So mm -hmm. you can imagine how that would affect your self-esteem. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I already felt like an outsider. And then this is not just your typical collar neck brace. This thing was huge. It traveled it, like uh, on my shoulders and then did like this semicircle across the front of my chest, my back. And then it came all up around the sides of my head, around the back, and then just on the edges of my face. How long and did you have to wear that? How I had to wear that for about half a year and do physical therapy. Um, I will admit, you know, I was pretty hung up on having to wear that neck brace and I was allowed to take it off if I did physical activity. So I was doing a lot of physical activity because uh, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. wanted to take that thing off. It was, it was yeah. uncomfortable and very noticeable. So um, that again was another factor on that really low self-esteem. And um, that is where, you know, learning to accept how my face looks took me a really, really long time. 
Uh, how did again, you do that? <laughs> Ooh, so how did you do that? Because you know that I, I don't know if you know about me, but I had a fractured skull, a facial mm -hmm. nerve crush when I was 19. And that's how I lost all my hearing in my left ear. But I couldn't move my face for a year, my left mm -hmm. side. So it was like I had a stroke now at 19. You, wow. you know, so I had to go for a year of rehab to try to move my face again. And to this day, I, that's why I'm always this way. Um, there's certain angles I only do because I still have to be very conscious of smiling, talking, uh, blinking my eyes, you know, because it's still, it's about 85% back. Mm -hmm. But I am a, I'm much better with TikTok because it, 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 I can turn a certain way and stuff. Um, but yeah. to be fully accepting of my face is really 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 hard and i coach people on this like i love myself but i don't know i'm not there yet so what is do you have a secret you know i don't think you know as women like we're not <laughs> as women we're not perfect and i will say there's definitely days where you know i'd rather not look in the mirror but compared to when I was a teenager and I avoided mirrors altogether, oh my gosh, I remember, you know, being in the public washroom and you see other women like doing their hair or touching up their makeup. I would like just wash my hands. Don't look in the Me mirror. Like, get the I, I, get the oh my God, out. I did the same thing. Like there was no mirror even there. It's yeah. Like, didn't exist. And I'd be like, it did not even go yeah. over and get my, oh, I swear, did the same thing. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, so, you know, I, a lot of it comes from practice of being in front of the camera and um, that is photography and video. So watching, you know, just practicing, I always recommend this to people practice, even if you just start with one to two minutes of talking to yourself, um, on the camera and then just rewatching it back and being, you know, kind to self, what, you know, if there's things that you didn't like, what was it, you know, can you improve upon it? Um, and then just a lot of mindset work as well. Um, you know, letting go of the things I cannot control and, um, practicing compassion and positive. I've always been a huge, huge believer in positive affirmations. They are super helpful for me. Love positive affirmations, really big. Uh, mirror work is another um, technique you might be familiar with. I do the positive affirmations. I tell all my clients because it, it did absolutely change my life. Um, I am beautiful. I am beautiful. I know that sounds really uh, vain, but mm. for me, it was something that I, I am beautiful. I am worthy. I am um, accepted and I had to, I write them, I say them, they helped me uh, tremendously. I would never be able to put the YouTube up, like with my yoga, I've just started doing that. Mm. I've, I wouldn't be able to do this live, even if I'm doing it this way and not real close to me, but it's still a big progress. But positive affirmations and gratefuls and all of that changes your life. The mirror work, I'm not there yet. Tell everybody what mirror work is. I know what it is, but. Sure. So yeah. that is just spending time <laughs> in front of a mirror, um, looking at yourself. And during that time, you can practice positive affirmations. Um, you know, you can do a meditation. You can um, just, you know, really being kind to yourself and accepting um, how you look. And. Yeah, um, I forget what I was gonna say about that next. Something as something else came into my head, but I don't know. Hopefully, you can edit that out. Take <laughs> uh, uh, a Yeah, we're so, talking about the gratefuls and positive affirmations, mirror work. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes, I think. You know, also really reminding myself that I am much harder on myself, knowing that I'm so much harder on myself than so self-critical and harder than what other people see. And knowing that other people don't see what I see. <laughs> so that was yeah. a big one. Because I don't know how many times, you know, I've told people, about how unsymmetrical my face is and you know i go into like this ear is higher than this one 
this and it's it's more to the front and this one's more to the back and my eyes are not symmetrical and this cheekbone this cheekbone i can feel it is higher than this one and people are like are you crazy and i'm like no but legitimately legitimately I, you know i was born with this i'm not just being like crazy and then people are like yes everybody's face is is you know nobody has like some perfect some symmetry or or whatnot and then realizing that yeah you know what i need to listen to those people <laughs> i'm laughing because i have the same thing i would tell people no my eyes don't close the same my smile is not symmetrical and lenora lenora you're the only one who sees this you know i'm like no look i do the same thing i know <laughs> so just really thing. getting over that and noticing that whenever i have those thoughts just stopping it and being like get over it you are who you are um, nobody is noticing, you know, nobody is that like <laughs> obsessed mm. or like you're, you're only you're noticing it because you're like, nobody cares. Nobody, nobody, nobody cares. cares. <laughs> and then, you know, when it comes to, and like I say this to people all the time, when it comes to like running a business online or offering a service online that you're marketing people, and this is so, this is truth. People don't care what you look like. They care about what you say to them. If you are educating them and giving them value, they will follow you. It doesn't matter what you look like. And that is, that is yeah, true. You think and I've that, learned you that. You think that's true? Well, I mean, I agree with you. Oh my God, I agree. But, you know, at first, with, I'm going to bring TikTok back and it's, this is not the subject. It's not. But mm -hmm. when you look at TikTok, the beautiful women, you know, you're either so talented like you got a, an, a this a crazy <laughs> talent of dance and or lip syncing or like what you do or whatever or you're just so beautiful or handsome and those are the people who have so many followers but in the end what what is the yeah. big deal about so I many think... followers it's just it's, yeah but know. you know forget about them think about people who are selling a service or a product who are marketing who are these coaches um you know it doesn't you don't have to be beautiful to be a coach and sell in the online space um does it help it, you know it might help attract some people but people care more about what you say and how you make them feel than what you look right. like yeah and yeah and you They're might attract resonate like with that the, not the good yeah the good people you might not be attracting the right people for your business yeah um, yeah, which is hard. So that's mm -hmm. what I meant with that. Um, mm -hmm. On another note, well, maybe we shouldn't talk about this. Uh, <laughs> what? 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 There's Tell an me. effect on TikTok, and I don't know if you've seen it. Um, there's a mirror wow. effect where it cuts that goes you right in half down the face. Right, you right, how, right. You can see how symmetrical your face is. Oh, uh, no, thought. I would never do it. I know. I saw, I, mean, I saw, I couldn't do it either. I saw someone else do it and I was like, oh my gosh, the face really is like so symmetrical. Um, yeah, no. yeah it's kind of crazy. So don't, you know, don't go do that filter. There's so many filters on there. But. I won't. I won't. I go to the normal filter. That's like, and then sometimes I'll swipe to the left a little bit for some mm -hmm. of my TikToks because I'm like, eh, I don't like it, but I don't want to not put it on. Um, and then when I'm on live, I do the normal, that normal filter, but that's huge. That's really yeah. a filter. And um, it is so crazy. I know we're getting off topic with TikTok, but if you have never gone live on TikTok, it is, I think it's just crazy that when, before you go live, it gives you the option to like make your eyes bigger, make your chin oh, more I hate that. That is yeah, insane. I, yeah, insane. I, it's bad enough that I have a filter. I feel <sighs> I feel guilty, but I've seen the the eye thing, and the, I'm like, no, I'm not. No way. No, I'm not yeah. doing that. Not that is happening. crazy. You know that. You know yeah. things like that. That yeah. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. It's not a good thing. So yeah. What what else? I know there was something else you said. You can tell me in your, yeah, in your story. Yeah. So so basically uh within a few so i had this transformative experience on my 40th birthday so the few years before it i had been practicing yoga i had this you know brand photography um experience in savannah georgia so things were kind of starting to turn um but i was not happy with 
how my life was going uh, at the time I turned 40. And uh, so I have a whole story there about how I manifested my soulmate and <laughs> that's and interesting. My, my dream career. Yeah, that's interesting. You can't be much older than 40. There's no way. Um, I mean, I yeah. think. Turning, okay, so you manifest yeah. your husband, yes. your boyfriend. <laughs> oh, let me know. Yes. Let me know. Come on. Yeah. Okay, so this is how it went. So um, my birthday <laughs> is around Christmas time. So at that time, you know, I don't typically get together with friends. It's really hard to have parties. Um, it's, you know, it's on the 23rd. I'm usually with family. Ugh. And specifically on that year, uh, I was at my parents' house and they are, were downsizing and moving. So they had sold their house and they said to me, you know, you have a bunch of boxes in the basement. You know, you need to just get rid of that stuff because we're moving got to get rid. And I kind of knew what was down there. It was boxes full of, you know, some travel mementos, but mostly everything that I've um, ever saved from previous romantic relationships, <laughs> love notes, cards, you know, old cassette mixtapes, you know, I save photos, everything. And then uh, uh, the other thing was a lot of journals. A lot of journals were in there. So I thought to myself, okay, well, you know, I'll spend the day in quiet contemplation and just, you know, going through this stuff. So I started picking up the journals and going through them and I just started to feel like really physically sick. I was like, who is this girl? <laughs> who was that? <laughs> that girl is pathetic. I'm sorry, but <laughs> it's sad. It's really sad. Oh, I, I don't mean to laugh at you. <laughs> no, it, it's all good. <laughs> I, because, you know, I could distinguish that I had been repeating the same patterns and had the same habits for so, so long, feeling very lost. Um, the low self-esteem, not loving myself, not um, being kind to myself, feeling this lack, like, lack of purpose in my life and lack of direction. And I looked at this and I was just like, I wasted so much time not living to my potential. I know deep in my heart, I have more gifts to offer. I can feel it and things have to change. Things have to change. I'm turning 40, I do not want to be repeating the same habits and patterns. It is time to change. So I didn't want to keep this stuff. And I thought, you know what? Let's just burn it. My mom was like, yeah, let's burn it. Let's have a fire. So we made you know, this bit of fire pit in their backyard. I went out there, and this is winter, <laughs> and we made a fire. And I just started burning everything. I burnt photos, the journals, um, everything, the mixtapes, everything. And at the same time, I had been single for a few years and kind of just, you know, really given up on all of it, given up on trying to find someone to share my life with, because I was like, you know what, I'm okay. I'm okay with like, just being an older lady with cats. That's, that's cool. That's fine. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I was telling myself, I also recognized deep down that no, I really want to find someone to share my life with. And I was like, why am I holding on to these, you know, love notes? from like 15 years ago, they've, they've moved on. Why have I not moved on? Um, so mm -hmm. through burning that, I felt like, you know what? I'm turning 40. I am going to find someone to spend my life with. And then it turned out that happened very, very quickly within the next few days. I was like, I have wow. to manifest my soulmate. I didn't know it at the time, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> I- Because you let go of that burden yeah. and you were open to new things. So yeah. make sense and at the to time me. as well, I didn't really feel like a lot when it was burning, but I say, you know, like a few days later, I started to feel some shifts happening. And they mm -hmm. say that's common too. Like sometimes you don't, when, you know, when you're manifesting or um, using the law of attraction per se, yeah, you, you know, you don't, might not feel it immediately. It just takes a little mm -hmm. bit of time. So mm -hmm. yes, that, that happened very quickly. Um, yeah. So I started, I was like, okay, so I'm going to set intentions. I'm going to go online and start dating. Um, and, and I did that pretty 
pretty fast within a few days. Uh, but at the same time, I also went to, uh, I was like right around New Year's, I went uh, to a dinner party uh, with a friend and there was this man there who had been in my yoga classes quite a few times. I didn't really know anything about him, but I was like, hey, you know, I, I recognize you. Like, you, I see you, seen you in my classes. And we started talking and we just really hit it off, but we became friends um i really did not see any i didn't look for a romantic potential there i think because he had um like recently lost his wife to cancer uh so oh, gosh. yeah so i just wow. thought that um you know he was he was grieving and we formed a friendship and i really really loved his he was actually quite positive <laughs> it was a little bit concerning um, like, sure? <laughs> you know, uh, you're grieving, but he was, um, had a very, very positive outlook and was also very big into mindset and psychology and yoga. And it was just because he, you know, had accepted what happened and, uh, was ready for another chapter in his life. Um, so we became friends. And in that time, uh, I was still like going on dates with other people and, and we actually lived very close to each other. And uh, we started talking, you know, almost on a daily basis. Um, and then by the end of January, uh, there was one evening that I went out. Uh, he invited me over to his house and I said, oh, I, I can't make it because I'm going out on a date. And um, I think I was, you know, in my phone, I was on my phone in my car and I was like, I can't talk right now. Like I'm, I'm driving, <laughs> you know, I'm being really bad. And, um, and then I didn't hear from him for a few days and I was kind of like, Oh, that's, you know, why haven't I heard from him? What's, what's going on? And, um, I messaged him and he was like, let's, let's talk. And I was, um, I was like, okay, uh, I just thought it had something to do with, you know, being grieving or something had happened. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we, we got together, we had a talk and he told me he had feelings for me. And I was just kind of like, whoop, yeah. like blown oh. away because I was like, oh no, this is really, really soon. I don't know about this. This is, you know, you know, oh. I think you need to be really sure about your feelings, you know, you're grieving. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's kind of the story of how that happened from there. You know, we took things, uh, very slow uh and it just you know we've been together ever since pretty much inseparable so yeah and are you married we are not married yeah. um yeah oh okay <laughs> <laughs> no, no. cool that's a cool mm -hmm. really nice story and you know what everybody grieves in their own way mm -hmm. you know you. we can't put a you know we can't put a label on how long we grieve how we grieve you know what i'm saying so you probably but helped I, me through that. I agree, immensely. but not everybody agrees with that. And they think that person should be grieving in another way. So there was definitely a lot of pushback from um, his in-laws who didn't, I think, understand. Um, yeah, and had a hard time with him moving on so quickly. Yeah, well... Yeah, you kind of have to understand that too, yeah. and not take that person. I am sure it wasn't yeah anything you know, personal against done, you. Yeah, and we've done nothing but honor her memory. We talk about her all the time. I've never, you know, I never met her, um, but I feel like I know her just because I've, you know, I've we've shared. He's shared so many stories of her and and everything um, mm -hmm. about the relationship, and we talk about her all the time. Yeah, it sounds like a beautiful so, relationship to me. Both of you. Yeah. So yeah, I feel very really lucky. nice. Very lucky. You are. You are. Uh, you come a long, long way. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to talk about as far as, and, and to me, you definitely are helping people through your adversities for sure. I mean, your whole story is about that. So, yeah, you know, so in, helping, yeah, everything I do, I really, you know, my mission is to help women to realize their potential and, um, and to empower them that they can do whatever they want to not hold themselves back because I know how much women hold themselves back. Hmm. Is mm -hmm. it just women you coach? You help? Is it just women? primarily women? Um, yeah, primarily women. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, okay. And, and where can people get in touch with you? I mean, is sure. TikTok well, you your can, main thing? 
Uh, no, you can check out my website, uh, which is just my name, wavewild.com. Um, yeah, I have Instagram. it. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it on yeah. the show notes too. Mm -hmm. Instagram at wave wild and, uh, yeah. TikTok is a uh, TikTok biz tips. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put all your links in the show notes mm -hmm. and, uh, I just loved hearing your story. It's great. And I love connecting with people that are like almost imaginary on TikTok mm. to me. <laughs> yeah. Because you see, yeah, you see them and you see them in the live, but you're not seeing them. I'm not mm -hmm. seeing you if I'm on your live. So um, that was Wave Wiley, everybody, Waverly, everybody, or no, Wave Wild. <laughs> and that was really awesome. I really loved you being here with me. Uh, before we go, I just want to let everybody know that all my links are going to be in the show notes also. And the only thing that I'm going to be sponsoring on my show, it's not even a sponsor. It's just, I want to promote this bar that I am an affiliate and I, um, I'm an ambassador of. It's called the Roar Bar. You can find the information in the notes below, but this bar is going to kick your butt. It's so great. I would not recommend it unless it's the best nutritional bar I've ever had. It's high in protein, low in net carbs, no artificial sweeteners, good for every diet, uh, sweetened with coconut nectar and blackstrap molasses. Uh, everything's organic except for uh, the um, almond butter, which they're trying to get uh, certified organic. Um, and the company is owned by just a husband, young husband and wife, Jake and Rachel from Minnesota. I love them. They're beautiful people. They give 10% of their net proceeds to feed the hungry children worldwide. So they're always doing something to feed, feed hungry children and I just love them. So that link is going to be my affiliate page is going to be below. So I hope you use that page. If you're going to order any questions, I am giving out my Google phone number for anybody who wants to ask any questions about the show. If you want me to address anything on the show, whoever wants to be on the show, if you have a story you'd like to share and that number is 609-429-4058. So that will do it for this first show. I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I'm going to sign off from It's a New Dawn. Thank you so much, Wave, for being Thank here. You. I really, Thank you I appreciate me. you. Okay. Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye.